Hi, I'm Lars. Welcome back to the shop. This is a really quick video. It's about 20 minutes of how to resize text without aspect ratio and without being uniform in Fusion 360. So if you're, this is what you're here for. Let's go take a look at it. So this is Fusion 360. Um, in order to start things off, you need to hit Create Sketch. This is your X plane, your Y plane, and your Z plane. And when you create your sketch, you need to choose a plane. So we're going to choose the X plane just because it lines up with my um, CNC machine. Uh, so here's your sketch, right? I'm going to call this sketch construction. I find out that uh, naming your objects makes things a lot easier on you. First thing we need is a two point rectangle. And this one needs to be 16 by 6. Okay. Our lettering that we're going to put in here is going to be 5 inches tall. And in order to do that, we need to take this and we need to extrude it. And we're going to just extrude this up like an inch. So we've got to select the profile. And let's take that up an inch. That's fine. And you can see that it actually extruded an inch. In order to put text on here, we need to put another sketch. All right, and don't worry about how many sketches are going to be added to this. So you're going to put this on this on this panel. I'm going to drag this back over here, and then we're going to put text on it. And each one of these little blocks, the way I have this set up, is a half inch. So we want to start up at this block here. Start that again because I hit the clip, hit the mouse button. So we're going to start right here, and we're going to come all the way down to right here. Um, I wish that you could say this is going to be a certain height or the frame or whatever, but you can't. And I need to put the word family in there. And the reason that this is 2.65 inches tall is because that's how much it fits. I'd love it to fit between here and here, and but this dialog box will not allow you to turn off the aspect ratio of the text. That would be something, if anything, that Fusion 360... If anyone knows anyone through Fusion 360, that would solve everybody's problems. So let's just hit OK. So the next thing, so what this did is this put family setting on top of this sketch, which is on top of this block. And I know this is kind of kind of funky, but this is this is the way it has to be done. So right now, the family is 2.65 inches. Okay? And there's going to be some math that's involved in this, so. That's why we need to know what that is. Uh, so now we need to uh, take this family, right click on it, and say explode the text. Exploding the text takes it from a font into vectors. So you could literally start moving these things apart. I don't recommend doing that, but you could. So let's just click on each one of these little bodies here, like this. Okay, so right now we have just this main body. We're going to right click on this and we're going to say extrude. And again, we could just take this up an inch. It doesn't really matter. And we're not doing a join. Make sure you do a new body. And you're about to see six more bodies be created over here. So the first body is your construction body. And then each one of these guys is going to be randomly put down here. They're not just in order by any means. And I'm just going to name these so that you can see when we select them that they turn on. And you're not just seeing random bodies. Uh, so here's F, A, M, family. There we go. So if I click on the F, you'll see F will show up in each one of these guys like this individually. All right. So the first thing we need to do is we need to turn off the construction. And we need to look at the size of this family. So we highlight everything, we go to Modify, we go to Scale, and this normally comes up in Uniform. So it kind of this would work exactly like the text box. What they need is they need a non-uniform that allows you to scale the Y separate from the X. So remember, I need these to be 5 inches tall, and our original was 2.65. I do not know if I can say... Um, Scale is 2.65 divided by 5. Nope, I'm going to go the other way. 5 divided by 2.65. There you go. 
So that's what I'm looking for. And if I turn on this other construction frame and hit OK, this is the beauty of Fusion. I wish every other application did this. Um, hit OK. So now I can click on my F, my A, my M, my I, my L, my Y. Uh, Got to click them all again. Here, let me turn off construction and make this easier. And let's go to move, and then I'll turn construction back on. And we can move this down to where I need it to be. So right now we're at 0.5. Let's make this like maybe 0 0.7. Uh, maybe 0.4. Yeah, that looks really good. So let's hit OK. All right, so now we've got family, the size that we want. And I'm sure a lot of people that have been trying to do this for a while are probably going, yay. Well, we're not done. So now this is the family sketch. So we're going to rename that to family. I don't think there's a T in family. Um, so that's the family. Now we can turn off the construction in the back. So now that you have your family and it is the right size and everything, now you can actually start doing things with your stock. All right. So you need to create a sketch and it needs to be on the Y. So it's at the top. It's going to be on the X, X plane. And now I need my box back. I need a different box now. And this one's still going to be 16 by 6. And this one here is going to get extruded to uh, this plane. And it's going to go up. 0.5 inches. So as you can see, we're still not touching the the Y. You probably could touch it, but I just think this looks looks better. It's looks it's easier for me to understand. All right, so I'm going to tilt this back just a little bit like that, and then we're going to go and we're going to create a new sketch, and we're going to put it on top of that body. All right, so it's sitting right there. You're going to go to create. Project include and choose project and then it's going to ask you for the geometry and you're going to click the face and you're going to see this red thing come up. It's going to look kind of weird, but just let it do its thing. F A M I L Y. Okay. Now go over to the bodies. Well, hit OK. Go over to the bodies and turn off the F, the A, the M, the I, the L, the Y. And your body six, eight here, you can rename to stock. And now you've got your face, your family is the size that you want to, to do it on. Okay, so now I need to um, I need to make a cutaway of this. So we're going to take the F, the A, the M, the I, the L, the Y, and we're going to extrude this again. And this distance is going to be negative 0.25. And it's going to be a cut. And then I'm going to hit OK. And that's what I'm looking for right there. But we're going to go one step further here because this is what this is what I do. And we're going to go down to manufacturer. So now that we're in manufacturer, I'm going to go to setup. I'm going to add a setup. I'm going to select my machine. It's my Kirby Enterprises. No, there's no picture. Um, nobody has taken the time to put one together. All right, so they're going to ask me to save the target first. So let's go to designs, uh, signs, and this one here is family 16. The other one is a different size, that's why I got to rename that. Okay, so we're going to create a setup, select the machine again, Kirby. And then stock point, model orientation stock point. So my stock point always starts here, right there. Now, something that you got to notice about the machining here, um, if you saw the last video I did, it has the, uh, it has this like little extra bit of stock out here. In order to get rid of that, you need to go to stock and say no additional stock. All right, we don't have any additional stock. Um, I don't have any, so if anybody does, then you can leave it. Um, and that's that's pretty much it. Uh, this next point here is how to set it up for your fixture. Like if you're putting your machine on here, 
which this is pretty much where the machine would end up being. There is no picture, so I usually just take this guy and say fixture point is basically back over here, and I let it go. Uh, the models that we're using are stock. So I've got to figure out right now, get rid of that. I'm going to say select stock so just to make sure I've got the right one, and then hit OK. All right. Oops. Okay, so there's your family. Now that you have family sitting here, let's add a 2D contour. And what you want to do with the 2D contour is you want to kind of kick this a little bit because you want to get the line to appear. So if you can see the line appearing, it's right next to the edge. See it shaking? Once you get that appearing, you don't want the face, you just want these closed chains so that it'll follow it. It actually does a really good job of determining what you're what you're wanting to, to grab. So like this is a face contour, I don't want that. I still got the face contour, so I need to tilt this a little more. I need to get, there's the edge right there. And then I also need this edge over here. That one. And that needs to be on the outside. As you can see, these are going around counterclockwise. This one's going clockwise. That means it's on the outside. Um, the next bay uh, is your heights. So here's your top is at zero. So it's telling me if I tilt this at the angle that my clearance height, my feed height is going to be 0 0.2. So if it has to go, like when it goes from F to A, it'll come up and it'll go over and down. The clearance height is actually when I go to leave, it'll be up at 0.6. I've actually got code. I wrote an application that will actually bring this up and move it way out of here because I don't like to hit my clamps. But my uh, this little point here is where I'm going to be probing off of. Um, in the passes uh, tab, this tells you more about how your pass is. If you want to do a roughing pass or multiple depths, um, I'm not doing multiple depths. This is only a quarter inch. And if you want to leave some stock, we'll leave stock on the next one. So I'll, I'll explain that to you in a second. So if you hit OK, um, that's weird. I thought we picked a bit and we didn't. OK. So if you zoom in on this, you will see that this is actually going around this and all this extra material is still sitting here. Okay. The reason I did this is the last time that I ran this, all I did the 2D first, the adaptive clearing first, the, this guy, and then I did the contour thinking that was the way I wanted it to do because I wanted it to be smoother. Well, the adaptive clearing made its way down through here and as it did, it snipped the, the tip of this triangle off on each one of the triangles. So I'm trying something different here. I don't know if it's going to work. It may work. I'm hoping it does work. Um, and we'll see. So let's do the adaptive clearing next. So let me put on here in this con... Well, we'll get, we'll get to it in a second. All right. So the adaptive clearing, we're going to use the same bit. I don't see any reason to switch it out. Um, And the geometry that we're going to be doing is the pocket selections is here, 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 and here. And now the heights are going to be the same. The passes, the stock to leave. Now the width of the 1 8 inch bit is 0.128. So I could probably take this up to 0.3 and be safe for the radial stock to leave and I'll show you what I mean so when this guy runs you see where it's cutting it's staying away from the edges and that's what I want I don't want these spirals to go in and grab a hole of that and rip it off so I think that looks pretty good the only way to really tell is to go into the simulator Okay. Now, something that I don't know if 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 you don't know, if you don't know this, then this is probably going to be good information for you. See these little indentations here? Those are not bad right now, but if you were trying to this guy right here is what I'm talking about. 
because this this ran the contour as if it as if it had already run but if you don't want this to happen I'm going to exit out of simulation and go into contour um, inside of the linking your lead-in entry has a horizontal lead-in. You'd want to turn that off and then your lead-out, turn that off too and then hit OK. Now you notice it disappeared. So if we go back to the simulation well, let me get out of that. Let's do the adaptive simulation. You'll notice it's gone now. All right. So it didn't lead in and then go into the from the side. Um, it's just something that I found and I thought I would share that with everyone. So if we hit the simulator, everything in green is being cut new. So as you can tell, we're not touching any of these points. I, I would not know if this is going to get tipped off here from the contour or not until this is completed through the CNC machine. So let's put this back up here and zoom it in. So that's what it would end up looking like. So now at this point we can exit the simulation. Um, I'm going to rename these things to uh, step 1 1 8th 2D contour and make this one here step 2 dash 1 dash 8 2d adaptive and I will literally copy that so this guy will go to the G1 to call the post process the post process I wish that these guys would do more than just you know drop in my operations like this you know name number because this is what the file gets named um, so we're going to create a new file directory here I'm going to go back to signs and new folder family-16 and then select that folder and then hit post. Then we're going to grab this one here, copy it and hit post. Now there's other things you can do. You can do your setup sheet. Um, we can go and drop this into design sign 60 and then you'll end up with a setup sheet that will look like this it's an HTML file it's just been dropped in there but it tells you your stock size it tells you your you know part um, stock lower stock upper um, Total tools. I think this here, yeah, number of tools is one, it's T3, um, tells you the operations. So this is operation one for 2D adaptive. Now, so I kind of goofed that one up. So I need to collect both of these and then hit this and say drop it in here. So now when that appears, you'll see both operations. So you can see the both operations. But it, you know, it gives you some good information. Maximum feed rate 70, 70, 16,000 RPM. Cutting distance is 913. Uh, estimated cycle time is 14 minutes, and this here is uh, one minute. This is about right. This is about right. So it'll probably take about 18 minutes totally to get this thing set up and going. So that's all I have on this I'm going to put a save on that and I hope that so one I hope that everything that you've seen here is like working out for you like this this is what you came to find answers for um, 2024 0116 and 1445 I'd like to thank everyone who has subscribed to the channel it helps us out with YouTube it also helps us define the content that we are putting out for the channel uh, there's a lot of stuff coming in the future, uh, a lot of CNC stuff, a lot of woodworking. I've uh, gotten some plans coming up for the summer. There's some jigs coming in for CNC machining too. Uh, a lot of stuff coming with X-Tool F1 lasers. So if you like that kind of thing, please subscribe to the channel. Like the video if you liked it and have a great day. Come back to the shop whenever you can.